Welcome back uh, to, uh, I didn't said, it's uh, 55 years since uh, joining the club, uh, plenty of memories and uh, it's been great that you could travel from your home in Perth, uh, which has been your home for the last 12 or 13 years. But I'd like to start with uh, your time growing up in Hunslet uh, and uh, your memories of, uh, of those days. Yeah, well, they were, they were fond memories, you know, uh, being a Parkside boy and going to watch Hunslet play with Young Barry Seaborn, I used to take him and my two elder brothers used to take us down there. But my father, of course, was uh, born and bred on St Michael's Lane here. And uh, he used to get the bus and come and watch Leeds play. And uh, us four would go down the parkside and watch Unsley play. Uh, and he was always on to us as we grew up and got a bit older, you know. Go up to anyway, come and see some good players. Especially when Lewis was playing at his prime. Lewis Jones, of course. And uh, I think one time me and Barry decided to forsake Huntley and uh, my dad and Barry's dad, we came up and watched a game and were impressed. And, uh, but we still followed Huntley. We came that once and, uh, and went back. And of course, as Huntley boys, we always wanted to play for Huntley as a girl. And you know, so strange that Barry signed before me, and then I come up, and then Mick Shuey, of course. Yeah. And we were all Hunslet boys. And Bewley Street uh, School in Hunslet as well. Exactly, all from uh, the same school, you know, Albert Air, Kenny Air, Barry, Sid, me, Bill Ramsey. Bill Ramsey, all Hunslet boys. They finished up at Edinley. And you had the benefit of a bit of tutelage from uh, Harry Jackson. As a school teacher, and he, he taught, you know, like I said, from, from Kenny, Albert, me, Barry, and Bill, and Mick, you know, even though they were at other schools. I think Harry finished up at Mick's old school, yeah. once like more, yeah. after he left Bueller Street. He, he was a teacher at Bueller Street, and then he became the head teacher at, uh, at Mick's old school. Yeah. So, yeah, we did a lot of this. And I know you always blamed Harry for some of your hamstring trouble that you had later on in your career. I did, I always used to have a bit of a laugh with him, you know. I, I, would, uh, I pulled a couple of hamstrings one, one time and I said, because you smacked me at the back of the leg, Harry. He used to pick us up and smack us at the back of the thigh. <laughs> and I always blamed him for the, the hamstring trouble I had. And signing for Leeds, uh, as you say, you actually signed a little bit later than some of the other boys. Yeah, I mean, they, they were signing them as they do now, you know, from 16, 17, playing in the Colts at Leeds. And uh, I dropped out of playing, actually, after I left Unsley at 16. And I never played again while I was 20. And then, of course, I had that season with Nalgo, rugby union of all teams. But, you know, I, I was playing school half when Leeds asked me to come along and have some trial games. Uh, and probably played two or three times at scrum half with Leeds over the years. As I got older and uh, we had a few injuries, it was good to go back and play scrum half. Uh, yeah. But in those early days, of course, Sid, uh, this was the Roy, the Roy Francis era at Headingley. Yeah. And uh, I suppose we're all lucky in our eras and Roy had so, so many good players that had individual flair. And he gelled us together so good. And, you know, in later, later years, when I became the coach, uh, I remember that, you know, that how good it was. But again, to have a great team and a good team, mm -hmm. you have to have the players with ability. It could come from any one of the 13, not just, you know, the individual one or two, but any one of the 13 that was on that park. And those years, 1965 to nine, the end of the 60s, really glorious years for the club. Uh, some special memories, presumably, the water splash final being one of them. Oh, yeah, I mean, undoubtedly. I mean, I actually uh, stiff armed somebody about six weeks before the final were due, and, we, and I had to train with my arm in a sling, you know. Didn't think I was going to make the team, but, you know, Roy was so confident in me that he wanted me to play. Uh, and the arms slowly and surely started to come back to nearly full 
movement and uh, and on the day they, they strapped my arm up so I could play that grand final and uh, what a grand final it was, you know, I mean, there'll be never, there'll be never another game at Wembley uh, in them conditions, I mean, if they hadn't been 100,000 in, of course, it would have been called off, but uh, there was 100,000 in the stadium, so they had to play the game. And you got the right result? We were fortunate to get the right result. I mean, I were, when they scored in the last few minutes and, and, and Hobbsy just had the goal kick to kick me and Mick Shilborn were in the far corner, we weren't even looking at him trying to kick the goal. We were looking up at the stand saying, shit, we've lost this game. And the next minute, the ball come towards me and make it come straight off Don's foot and come towards me and make it the corner flag. Un <laughs> unbelievable, that one. Unbelievable. And a year later, uh, another memorable occasion, of course, was the championship final. Uh, the two great rivals at the time, Castleford and Leeds, fought out at uh, the final at uh, Odsall. Uh, that was a memory as well. Yeah, I mean, like you said, fought out the final. And it was a fight with Castleford every time we played them. It was battle, battle, guns drawn and everything, you know. And anything went in them games against Castleford in them, in them times, the late. 60s and the early 70s. Well, the two teams had played each other in the third round of the Challenge Cup earlier that year, and Castleford getting an hour nine points to five victory. And I do remember that as a fan, as a particularly tough game. Yeah, I mean, the, the were tough games. They had some great players as well, and they were having a good run, the same as us, you know. They had Chuck Hardesty and Keith Epworth and some big forwards, and we had the speed, you know, and they did, but. Yeah, we, we had a battle or two, and Malcolm and Brian Lockwood and Clive Dickey and Johnny Ward, and, you know, I could name a lot of their pack that tried to sort me out, but so many of them did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, we're talking about sorting now, we're going to move forward to uh, what wasn't a great highlight, uh, the, the cup final at Wembley in 71, uh, when of course uh, Lee came and uh, upset the odds and uh, Alex Murphy and such. And, uh, and a dismissal, Sid, uh, that's uh, one, once again one of the uh, memorable moments for you. Sid Hines. And up the ball. These have really uh, been dropping passes. What's happened? Somebody's been sent off. Sid Hines has been sent off the first time ever. The captain has been sent off. He said for Putin. And Sid Hines, the Leeds captain, has been sent off the first time in history of a Red League Cup final. That Hines has been sent off. According to the referee, where he looked, he was Putin. I, the the touch just came on. And apparently the suggestion by the action of the referee was for Button, but uh, the judges came on and Murphy is on the ground and there is a sad sight for the Leeds captain. See that Alan Smith come to walk off with him. Alan Smith is the international winger who couldn't play and off he goes to the dressing room. Well, that's the side and uh, the stretch has been asked for. Alec Murphy is the one that's out. And the stretch is coming from this side of the ground. The stretch is walking on very slowly. Here it comes. So Alec Murphy is out. And the touch judge was called on, and then the referee indicated by nodding his head that he was for Button on the halfway line. Lest is now ready to come on as a replacement as Murphy is carried off. The some final some years ago between Huddersfield and St Helens when Johnny Hunter uh, was carried off, but he came back on again. We shall see what happens. And the remarkable thing, of course, about this is that both captains are, at this moment, off the field. That Sid Ange is in the dressing room, walked off, 
Malik Murphy will be in the dressing room being carried off. That so was just... There's Les Chisnall, 14. And there's 13 minutes to go. So this was the... There he is, Les Chisnall. This is the dramatic moment of this match. You can add a couple of minutes before this had happened, so... Yeah, I mean, you know, and I always said all, all along that uh, I missed Alex and he took a dive and, you know, it were, it were great to hear that news last year from uh, Peter Smith, the Yorkshire Evening Post writer, after he'd interviewed the Yorker there. Uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin, yeah, Kevin, and, and he admitted that he told Alex to stay down because I got sent off. And I always, you know, up to this day, if I'd have hit him, he wouldn't have got up, you know, and, and that's the truth of the matter, and maybe he will uh, tell the truth about it. <laughs> but you're adamant you missed him. I am still adamant to this day, Gary, that I missed him. And he's one of the few that you missed it, because you can't blame yeah. others. Yeah, and they, they didn't get up, you know. <laughs> they had to stay down for a bit, I think, but, uh, yeah, he, he, he conned Billy and he conned. But, you know, the referee always told me after, Billy Thompson, that he wasn't the one that sent me out. The touch had actually run onto the beam and told Billy that I should walk in you know, up what had happened. But uh, yeah, and well, you know, we we met up. We all three of us used to love racing. Alex Murphy, myself, Billy Thompson, wherever I'd go racing, I'd always bump into them two. And you know, there were no malice afterwards. They were they were good good fun and forgot about and get on with the game. Yeah. And I think having had such a glorious career with Leeds, Sid, uh, you went, then went on to uh, a very successful time as coach, player coach to start with, and then uh, coaching I think seven finals, seven wins, some memorable moments uh, during that time as well. Oh, oh yeah, you know, after, after doing it as a player, and then staying at the club all the years I did, and uh, being the first player coach that Leeds had ever had, uh, and having the success I had with a young team, I mean, to begin with, I had some of the older players that helped fetch the young ones on, but then as they gradually got to be, I call my team, the young boys, you know, David Ward, Roy Dickey, Graham Eccles, Phil Cookson, you name them, you know, Johnny Holmes and Kevin Dick and several other centres, you know, and, and signed one or two along the way to help us, help us out from time to time. and. Uh, you know, I had a fantastic 21 years there anyway. It was half my lifetime, you know, but no one can ever take that away from me, Gary. I mean, it's, uh, it's so good to be back again. And probably the two highlights would be the 77 and 78 consecutive Challenge Cup wins. Oh yeah, that was, that was, that was tremendous. You know, being there and played, lost to in the early 70s, won one in the 68, the water splash, and played with Great Britain there a couple of times, you know. Uh, and then taking the team back, what I call my team. Uh, and both years, you know, we, we hadn't performed that good uh, in the league. I think one year we, we come from eighth in the league and, and still won the grand final at Wembley and then did the double. And then we're going for the treble, of course, in uh, 79. And missed out on it, but yeah, we won the next best, the Premiership in 79. So two grand finals. 77, 78, and then the Premiership, 79. Yeah. And glorious time with Leeds, but also with Great Britain uh, as an international Sid, and uh, presumably the uh, been part of that successful Lions Tour, the last Lions Tour to be successful in Australia, to win a Test Series, and, a series, and you've been very much a part of that in 1970, to go over to Australia and win that series, and you've been such an integral part of that team, once again, another highlight for you. Oh yeah, going out there, you know, after after skippering Great Britain, back in the UK, you know, we, the memory skipper to go to France, you know, before we went on to all that year. Uh, but going out there uh, in them days for 13 weeks and playing all them games that we did, you know, I think the record was something like 27 games, lost one, drew one, won 25, you know, and fetch the Ashes back. Uh, and at the back end of the tour, of course, we had a couple of weeks in New Zealand and played two test matches over in New Zealand and won both of them. So, 
you know, a fantastic uh, 13 week, you know. And some of the great players in that tour as well, your own teammates from Leeds, five, five, five of the Leeds players? Yeah, five, of, five went from Leeds and uh, five went from uh, Castleford as well, you know, local boys and a couple from OKI, you know, Roger and Big, uh, Phil the big forward Phil Lowe and, uh, you know, still saw Phil on Friday at the game here and he's still good and, you know, we were reminiscing and, uh, of course, the coach who uh, turned up, Johnny Whiteley. What a fantastic man he was. He used to come and wake us up in the morning and say, I'm sorry to one or two uh, that shouldn't have been there and say, I've got to get him up take him training, you know. But uh, yeah, he, 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 he was a fantastic coach and he's in good health and he's coming up 90 and uh, yeah. it was great to see him as well. And some, I'm just thinking, looking back to that tour, some, 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 some highlights, some special games and players' performances that you remember? Oh yeah, uh, no doubt. I mean, uh, again, I was under the thumb. Of, you know, getting sent off in the second test, of course, at Sydney Cricket Ground, because Big Hardy come through and smashed me two with him to eat them. and then I turned around and tried to lamp big one back, missed again, but got sent off there. But uh, you know, in the third one, off went Hardy. He got sent off in the third one, but we had some fantastic games. I mean, I can remember one game especially. But that was in New Zealand, getting on a, a single track train right the way up to Greymouth, ankle deep in mud. The playing field were like a paddock in uh, Kelsfield. And uh, I don't know, I think I scored five tries and kicked about eight goals in that game. And <laughs> that was a fantastic place. And then coming back on the train, the train driver driving the train back, and he's got a crate of beer that side of him. And we're having a drink with him while he's driving the train back. You know, I always remember that yeah. from the back end of the tour. Yeah. But, you know, when we were in Australia, of course, I mean, we started in Darwin and come down the East Coast. And we actually played at Toowoomba. We actually played a game in Toowoomba where the ghosts came from, of course, so they carry it. Yeah. yeah. So I have been there where, where they came from. And other parts of the outback that you played as well? Yes, in them, in them days. The, when the Great Britain team went, it was a promotion, you know, as well, playing in the country games as well as the uh, the main games in Brisbane and Sydney and, and that. But never got down to Melbourne in them days. No. No. So having lost the first test, all the pressure is on to win the second one. The second one in? In Sydney Cricket Sydney. Ground, yeah. Both, both the second and third were in the, the Sydney Cricket Ground. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it was. And... Uh, Johnny changed the team round, you know, and in the first one in Pink Brisbane, I think it gives the more senior players uh, the priority to try and win the first one, but that didn't work. So he changed the team round in the second one, got it right, of course, and uh, we made it all down to the final game, the third game, you know, when it was one one. Yeah. You know, we were lucky, we, we won it. I scored the winning try, which I'll never forget. But you know, a lot of people say to me, what, what were one of your greatest moments? And even though I played five or six games at Wembley Stadium, played them, led them out as a coach, I got a big kick, biggest kick ever coming out for that third and final test in Sydney in 70. And of course, winning it was, made it even more special. Mm. Many, many, many happy times I've had it. Well, one of them, it wasn't uh, a great result for us because we didn't win the game, but the World Cup final played at Heading in between uh, Great Britain and Australia later on in that year. Yeah, yeah, they came across here and we, we played them up here and again, unfortunately, Sydney got into a bit of trouble and got sent up with their scrum out. And, uh, I mean, in our changing room, it was one big communal bath and two single baths where you could have a single bath if you want to know. And Billy's in one room, I'm in the other room, the old bad man in the room. I said, go get him out of the other room, fetch him in here, and we, he's in one bath, I'm in the other bath, we're having a bottle of beer, and they're still bashing shit out of each other out here on the field. And uh, you know, that's how it was. They were, it was tough when you were on the field, but when you were off the field, it was good camaraderie. And so I've been in such a glorious uh, career, Sid, uh, with both Great Britain, England, Leeds, 
uh, where we brought his player and coach to come back now and to be part of the uh, the club's Hall of Fame and to be inducted as one of the uh, the members of that uh, very illustrious uh, group. That will be another highlight of your time. Oh, it's just Gary, you know, coming back and not being back for three years and seeing uh, what the company's done with the new stadium now and then having it kept a secret until I arrived. Uh, Thought of coming back just to celebrate the Premiership game from 69, 79, 99, 2009 and then uh, being awarded with what I did do is very, very humbling and no wonder the other boys that received uh, the same accolade as me uh, joined the elite uh, felt emotional. It was a very emotional time on uh, Sunday. And uh, yeah, uh, my grandson uh, back in Australia. Well, we'll get you a copy of this, Sid. Yeah, we'll you'll be very proud of his pop. He will be, yes, absolutely. As indeed we all are, Sid. Sid Hines, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Sid, that man. Yeah.